you know something? I want to make a quick video for you guys on this thing. And you probably know it already, but here's what. We're reading about, we're here at Ponce and the Museum of Life House. And we're reading about some of these um, inventors. This one person here, look at this, Augustine Jean Fresno. People look at him and say, hey, they did something for the time and that's it. Doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to walk and connect to him just a moment to show you something. You know, people here, look at all these inventions here. These things are done so long. The kerosene lamp, incandescent vapor lamps, electric lamps, all this stuff. How do they come from? You know, we keep going back and forth here all the time. Why? Because all these things here matter. Because these people did it with even, I say, maybe less say computer assisted devices that we have, electronic devices, and they had to make it work. All the different metals, all the different stuff, to check, to check to see how it works with cooling and heating, lighthouse fuel, tablet lamp, all these things here, kerosene lamps, the lenses, the levers, all these things here. It's a lot of work. The bronze name plate. I'm just gonna look at them real quick and I'm just gonna go over them, read them to you real quick. Okay, so bear with me one second, okay? This is not, you know, not a clue that you just, you know, it's an eye and eye as you know, keep it real. So just, here yeah, it is. This is called the History of the Lighthouse Illumination, right? At Ponce in Atlanta. This is one of the, I don't remember whose house it is, but let me show you around what, what's really here. You might have seen one of the other videos we had in the past. And you'll keep seeing more because we keep making more because there's a lot of history here. And I'm like, what's in there? All this stuff we see, all these different cars and machine, device and machine. I don't take them for granted. All these things here, everything here has a purpose. And the people did it back then with so much little things. I mean, not that much assistance, but, well, maybe a lot of assistance, but not that much, say, of ease. It's not easy. But they did it. Let's see something. So I'm saying, all the young ones, and even us, you know, all the ones, those people there who said, hey, you know, I'm bored, I don't know what to do with myself, I don't know, I'm bored, I have things. How can we be bored with all these inventions here to be invented still? All these things done now, all these things are done. Look at the brasiers, brasiers and stuff, brasiers. I gotta read that stuff, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna put the mind right. But listen to me, all this stuff was done back then. Almost, look at 1716. Almost what? How many years now? We're, in today, we're going to today, 20, December 31st of 2023. You go to almost what? Almost 600 years plus, right? We had it up, right? 23. Maybe you go to 24. Yeah, 600 years plus, roughly, almost 2016. And they did it back then. So, as, as the book of Solomon says with the Bible, there's nothing new under the sun. But hey, so that means there's also, there's also inventions here, more and more inventions. And there are going to be more and more inventions coming up. Because people learn how to make it better. Different metals, different alloys. And they always ask yourself the question, where? You see the talking, like old grandpa over here. Uh, Granger, look at me in my Matthew B shirt, all right? How did they do these things back then? Happened so little. And how do you say they evolving? Does it look like evolving to you? Hundreds of years ago was done already and it works so well still. It did it for the time with not that much different digital device and assisted aids, but they did it. All these things here. All these things here and yet, let see this one. Okay. I'm trying to put it in the, this is on the, this is on the, I have it on the glass. Actually, no, compass here, marble compass. I have it, literally have it, the photo on the glass. I'm trying to describe it, trying to find it, let me touch it, let me see. I mean, look at this stuff here. something real quick so maybe if you have time let's see what it is so what is a fresno start at this side what is a fresno lens you look me a second right a fresno lens pronounced freno is what makes the relatively weak lighthouse at the top of the lighthouse strong enough to be seen many miles away the fresno lens is actually a combination of lenses and prisms that are collecting light into a single beam the freno lens are ranked and it's actually freno it's here top here f-r-e-n-e-l Right, lenses are ranked by size of order. The first order only being the largest and the sixth order being the smallest. Other sides have been developed over the years. Fixed lenses. The fixed fresnel lens emitted a steady and blinking light. The central lens called a drum or barrel lens is surrounded by the prism above the, below. On the point in that first order lens, you will notice the silver coated copper reflector panels that help intense and find the light. The point you can only need it to be seen from more and did not need to cover this is to be the rotation. And there's so much I can tell you. You know, realistically, I cannot put it all in one video. So I want you guys to see this stuff for yourself. You have to come here. Come down. This is, this is, in, this is over here. Ponce in the Lighthouse Museum. At, what? This is what? Pon, this is Ponce. Pretty much it's Ponce. Over there and thing in, in Florida. You know? And thank God they kept these things preserved. Thank God they keep it here. I'm almost like speechless. What do I say? 
I'm saying is like, I can't put it on in one, so the best thing is come, buy a family plan or buy a pack, buy an annual pass, come take a look at it. I'm not paid and endorsed by neither of them. I'm just speaking on my own. Any words I said are out of places, you know, is my own. But we have to see your history. History does repeat. Let's read this one. Fires and towers. Signal bonfires lit on the hillside, hillsides or dunes near the harbor entrances were probably the first lighted beacons to aid mariners in navigation. As ships began venturing further out to sea, towers were built on the hands you can read for yourself. For the beacon for the beacon fires so they could see be seen at a far greater distance. The first real lighthouse for which we have concrete evidence was built on the island of Pharos or Pharos? P H A R O S near the entrance of the harbor of Alexandria, Egypt, in about 280 BC. Wow. This structure may have been 450 or even 600 feet tall and was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The Pharaohs, like Pharaoh, right? Pharaohs served as a lighthouse until about 800 AD and survived until an earthquake. I like to say AD is after the death of Christ and BC is before Christ. They have a different way of saying it, but I like to say that's what I remember right better. So. This is my personal thing on it. The Pharaoh serves as a lighthouse until, mm -hmm, until an earthquake toppled in 1349. The beacon at the top of the lighthouse was a fire was a fire in an open lantern room. Various reports suggest the fuel may have been wood or perhaps bales of cotton that have been soaked in flammable liquid. Smoke died in mariners by day and by and flames by night. Sounds almost like Jesus when God helped them to cross the you know after the Red Sea and helped them navigate the wilderness, you know. Pill of cloud by day to give them shade and coolness, and pill of fire by night to give them warmth and to see. Here they use what smoke and stuff. Do you see how these things all work together? The Bible, history, reality, practicality, life in general. This is this is this is amazing. Braziers and stove. Okay, iron braziers or baskets held the fires of most early lighthouses, and fire continued to be a major source of lighthouse illumination in the 18th century. In the beginning of the 16th century, coal came into use as a lighthouse fuel and was burned in cast iron stoves and lantern coal. Has its place. Candle chandeliers. You see them all the time in the movies, right? Like some of those like, mythical or like, like, fantastical movies that are about like, castles and dragons and knights and stuff. Here's where they come from. Tallow candles. Tallow. Tallow. Hmm, were used in the first lighthouse to be erected in what would become the light United States become the United States, the Boston Harbor Light, built in 1716. During the 18th century, improvements in the art of whaling produced spermaceti or whale oil candles. Hmm. Spermaceti, S-P-E-R-M-A-C-E-T-I, or whale oil candles, which burn longer. Now, I remember some of the stuff when I was a, when I was a kid. Um, grandfather, and me how they used to go whaling. And they used the whale oil, the blubber, and the fat. They melted it down and used the whale oil for other things. Interesting, bright and with less soot. Grandfather's a sailor. Lantern rooms were enclosed with glass to protect the candles, and soon the light was amplified by the use of metal reflectors. Amazing. Now, oil lamps, amazing. Fresno lens, amazing. And you have inventions I see here by Americans, by other people. I see Irish people, Irish inventions, all kind of stuff. I mean, look at this stuff here. Someone had to draw this up and make it to scale. US 5 wick mineral oil lamp, 1885, first order. Had to make this thing up here. You know, and then to put it together, parts of the lamp, and they had the, 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 the A for the supply reservoir, the burner for B, the chimney, the damper tube, the bridge, the floating chamber, brass, supply tube, holder to damper attachment, damper attachment, I, K, connecting to L, crown piece, all this stuff here. Look at those other pieces on the side here. All these things. Look at the drawings. I remember doing some of this in, like, in high school. We had to do the, you see the, like, the drawings up there with the arrows and stuff? I'm saying, this is like, this is where I'm, I thank God the school didn't actually show this stuff. And they did this since back then. Look at this stuff here. We're talking about, oh, we, our life is, well, I mean, I say that. Some people say, your life is so hard. They can't do this. They can't do this. can't do that. Look at what they did. Look at what they were doing back then. Look at these, and these things are, some of them have to be patented and stuff. And they had to, they didn't, they couldn't advertise as we do today and how to make all these bulbs and lamps and all these tools and appliances. Happy, happy stuff you see now, all these tools and stuff you find at the Home Depot, all, those, all these files and stuff you see here, all these things here, beautiful, all these things, scissors and shears and compasses and all these measurements, this is amazing, these are the tools, implements of lighthouses and the scales, all this stuff here, somebody was doing it, I'm like, God bless them, and the brushes and the stuff to clean the stuff up. The biggest thing is I want to say about how they make light bulbs and filaments to keep the light and stuff, keep all the stuff inside of it, like, I mean... Keep it at a lighthouse, parts it up, fix a lighthouse. We're gonna get back to that story soon. I wanna end it with that one, you're gonna see. But I'm saying, 
how these guys change ball, how they rotate this stuff here, all these things here have a purpose. And it's like, we need to go and study these things and see how these guys, are, how, first, how they get the filaments to be there, how they get the stuff inside of it to work. Look at this, I'm just trying to, I mean, saying little kids, those, and they say little kids, you know, like to pull and stuff, take things apart. Take a look, all these things here. All these things here. And Apple thank you got your phone that work to make these things happen get a better picture. Look at these things here, it's just detail. I'm not I'm just using the magnification from the from the from the camera. I gotta just get this stuff. Amazing and beautiful. Such detail. And how long would you guys made it? Absolutely amazing. If you want the back. Amazing. You see? Look at this. A lamp changer. Warms and some 1952. All these things here. And more some improvements. More on the stuff. Look at all these things here. And, uh, absolutely amazing. A lamp. Look at the front. And then to make a bubble like this. Here. Look at the cables and to make your wake make up for heat and all this stuff dissipation. Amazing, amazing, amazing structures. What did they do back then to do this stuff? And this should be inspiration to all of us. I said, please take a trip, come here to Ponce in Atlantis Museum and all the museums around. All the museums, the MoMA, the Mall of Natural History, the ones in New York, around the country. Do not forget history. Because, you know, as again, as you see, this when December 31st, we, this year will be history also. And they say, what were made and created and stuff. And talking about that, I have something to say also. I just recently saw um, a picture, it was like a, they had a reel, a reel about we'll meet again. They had it played on one of the shows and they're talking about people who have come and gone and sadly passed away in the year 2023. And I'm like, wow, so many names of people passed away in 2023 that I didn't even know. Oh, I, I know them, but I didn't know they passed away. And I'm like, where is this person here? Where is this person? And I'm like, wow, this person's gone. And I'm like, look how life just changes. Look how life is. We come, we go for a little bit of time, and then we disappear. And I'm like, that's it. So all the actors, the movies, the players, the games, you know, in terms of football players, the basketball players, golf, all these things they made, all the money, the wealth, all the good days, bad days. It's the Bible said, love and I hate. Everything that's there, once was there. It ceased to exist and it's gone. We can't take none of it with us. So, the treasure we really should have should be the treasure in heaven. And the treasure in heaven are the way or is the way we treat people, each other. People are the treasure in heaven. People, the love for people, love for God is what's the treasure. That means all this stuff you see here that's come and gone, or that's been improved upon. All these people and inventors who did this stuff back then, who made all these amazing inventions that we're now living and building off of. They did it to benefit all of humanity, all of us. So just now making this video now in a couple of days or months or years from now, it's history. What would have been a benefit? I hope someone would have said, hey, someone tried to show us that history does matter. We cannot forget the past. We cannot try to erase it or destroy it. We need the past to build on the future. We need to know what the future is going to be like based on what we do. We need to build off of that. All the technology we have, even in this phone, all the technology you see here is built on something. So I'm like... Let's see. Let's read about this gentleman here. To let you see that, never cast anybody off. Anybody, even people you might say, oh, this children are autistic, or this one here, this one is AWHD, or adult attention deficit disorder. Some kids are just restless. Some people are restless. I like some kids, the kids that are restless, that are always inventive and creative. Let them make a mess. Let them build stuff in the house. Let them put the boxes and throw them here and there. Let them put the pieces together. Let them do creative things. As I said, give kids like stuff like even you know, the Lego blocks and the things. Let them build stuff. Give them wood pieces. Give them things here. And monitor them. Watch them and, and encourage them. Adults too. Even the elderly. Let them build things. Let them sew. Let them knit. Let them build. Let them invent. Let them create stuff. Let's see what we can do with it. Look at this. Let's read about this gentleman here because he, let's see. He didn't give up. August Jean Frenel. He said his name is Freshman. So Augustin Jean, I said his first name wrong. Augustin Jean, Augustin or Jean Jean Frenel, pronounced 
is Fresnel, F-R-E-S-N-E-L, but it's pronounced Fresnel. Was born in France in 1788. He was frail, like he was frail and plagued by ill health when he was young. Reportedly, he did not speak until he was about eight years old and his teachers considered him slow-witted. However, during his secondary schooling, he showed such talent in graphic arts, geometry, and mathematics that he won admission to the, to the famed Ecole Polytechnic, maybe it's a Polytech, not suited to the military career that traditionally followed an education there. He completed his studies at the School of Bridges and Highways and became a civil engineer to work on the national highways. He found the work dull and in Involved himself in scientific studies, developing new theories concerning optics and lights. Something interesting. I need to watch a video of this guy. Hopefully, somebody made it on YouTube where you can see something there. And thank you, YouTube, for having these videos there. They're being a big help to have them so we can learn more. But he was only, you see, he's only in his 20s and he's, do, he's working in this place doing this stuff already. In 1815, the Fresnel submitted a paper which contradicted the well accepted light theories of Sir Isaac Newton. The scientific community ridiculed him. But Fresnel was able to defend his position by devising an experiment still used by scientists today and referred to as Fresnel's mirrors. In 1821, so let's see this. 1815, he's born in 1788. So add 12, right? That means 12 plus 15, that means he's only 27, right? 27 years old, he's doing this stuff and, and contradicting, going against the, the once held strong scientific community's thing. Because science is supposed to be tested, refuted, tested, experimented, tested, tested, and then finally, it's never finished. It's always, you can always improve on it. Let's see what, it, what, what is true, what holds true until something else comes to, you know, add to it or displace, you know, or replace. 1821, his impressive theories of optics gained him an appointment as secretary to the Commission of Lighthouse. Was he supposed to be slow-witted and slow and dull, couldn't speak till he was eight years old? And you tell me now at 27, right? After eight, 27. Now, this 19 years post, he's now become a secretary to the Commission of Lighthouses? The following year, he perfected his theories in the development of his new lenticular lens, known not known, no, now known as the Fresnel lens. The first of his lenses, a large first order lens, was installed in the Cordion Lighthouse in France at the mouth of the Gironde River. Fresnel lived long enough to see his remarkable invention installed in many lighthouses, but his health was frail and he began to deteriorate. On July 12, 1827, let's see, 1827, let's see, that means it's not that long. Oh, poor thing. The f so, if he's born in 1788, 1827, he didn't live that long. In, on July 12, 1827, the father of the modern lighthouse lens died in Paris at the age of 39. He was only 39 years old, and look how much his work has done. His papers were published many years later. He has since become famous as a geometrician, engineer, philosopher, inventor, and the most foremost pioneer in the theory of optics. Yet, he was considered slow to speak until 8, and his teachers considered him slow-witted. Should we ever dare write anybody off? Should we ever say, oh, oh, these people don't have anything. They don't have anything. We're going into another, another year. Another year. And we see more and more stuff here. Things invented, things once there, things replaced, including us human beings. And now we have AI and other stuff helping us. So are we gonna say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter anymore? Look at these things here. This is history here. As you start the new year, I would say, please, go into the, go into the, go into a museum and go back and look at this stuff and let's look and see how things are and see what do they have here that tells us that this life here is worth it. All these things invented here, you got to come see because there's so much here. But thank you guys, everyone who's been here preserving it. Thank you for all these inventors who have made it. Thank you guys all the time for taking time to listen and watch these videos and to share them, to, to subscribe and to, help, and to help each other because... We're praying by the grace of God that people start encouraging each other more. Encourage each other to do more great things and to not give up and to not feel like, you know, I don't know what's going on outside here. Life is just boring and dull. Because another thing, during this time of the holiday seasons and as we go into the new year, many people be, get, get depressed and get sad and get, they feel sad because they find I have no one. Some people may be looking for spouses and wives and husbands or kids and other things. I mean, some may be feeling sad or sick or even ill health, you know? And they say like, does anything matter anymore? Does anybody care about them, their life? Is anything worth it anymore? Many people get depressed, actually. You see all these things and they say, huh, people are doing great things. And it's like, ah, there's no purpose to it. And I'm like, yes, there's a purpose. Time happens. Time is here for all of us to enjoy and for us to go to an experiment and to, and, to, and to try to see what it is. I mean, just the best thing I can advise anybody, ask God for help. Ask God for guidance and wisdom to see how to make this happen. Ask God. 
please show me lord teach me how to make things happen here how to make things happen here so we can live a life and to be fruitful and to multiply your knowledge and your talents given to us ask god how is it possible lord for us to be here and you know and to just to survive and live amongst everything that's happening here because there's so much to learn so much to see yeah, you know, there's so much to see so that one's one of the buildings over here this is part of the series of the ones at the lighthouse and this is some other ones we're watching this is the generator building did a video before i'm just going backwards and see hello here's the generator room all the tools look at all this stuff here every time i see it i'm like amazing amazing all the tools grandfather that used to use these things we use them i use some of them still all this stuff here inventions of the past inventions of the past i hear them in the back the most code again we did a video earlier but every time i come back there's always more to learn amazing inventions Look at this, look at this, the planes over there, those things here. Let me see, I don't want to touch the glass too much. Look here, these things here, if you can see it. My grandfather used these things to build the boats, you see. Can I get an angle? Oh, I can't. It's hard to get, let me see. Try this way. They used to build boats into, into wood to fall them down, to get the shot, to make them nice and level and plain. Yeah, they'll call a plane. <laughs> all these things, the motors, the generators, all these tools here, look at this stuff. Hmm, for plowing and stuff, you might see them in some of the villages, like Amish village and some of these places still. You know, these tools are kind of rudimentary, but they did it. The saw tools, those saws and band saws, and stuff, not band saws, but these kind of saws. All these things here, all these measurements here, things to grab and pick up wood and stuff. You see them with the loggers and the lamps and the lanterns and the levees and the pulleys. Look at these things, all these things here, not to be taken for granted, the chains, all this stuff here. Everything has its place, everything by the grace of God to be used for purpose, to give him glory and to make these things. Look, for shoes and to fit in them. Little, little bitty shoes, look at this stuff here. And, and these guys have to do the work with it by themselves here. Wow, amazing. Don't take it for granted. Coast Guard Beacon House Generator. Let me see. Let me see. All this stuff here. I don't want to think it too much. I'll do more, but I'll usually get copyright. So I do kind of need these to, to be like that. Unless I make the, the video quiet. But I'm just saying, you know, as you, as you get a chance in a moment every now and then, just get out there and take a look at what's out there in nature. Take a look out there. What's in your backyard? What's around the town? Take a look around and see, you know, what's at the top? What's at the top? What else does God has planned? Because by the grace of God, we're not done. We're not done. A lot more to do, a lot more to go. And for those trying to blow up the world, destroy it, stop it. Those who want to, oh, it's not purpose, stop it. Those who get depressed, come on, come on, be encouraged, come on, come on. We got to do more things. I love you guys, okay? Come on, come on. Hundreds of years ago, this was done. And we get you know, and we just this is a small speck, one tiny sand grain in the in the realm of many, many more. Such beauty. I gotta go up this time. I'll look in the other videos before of um the videos and you see what we've had <laughs> going on before. But as you see the kids out there back there playing like that, that's how we gotta be in this world. Play and enjoy life and just take take in all the beauty and the things of it. It's just a wonderful place to be in. Very nice, very nice. God bless. All right, thank you. All right. Okay, so let me head off now, make sure you remember me a little bit, and we shall catch up again, okay? Wonderful. God bless it. And you guys, have a happy New Year's. Take care.